How are we doing? Um, I want to take a little bit of time today and talk about welding on ceramic, okay? Um, ceramic backing is incredibly helpful uh, if you want to produce a butt weld that you don't want to have to back gouge or you don't want to have to use a backing bar. Um, it allows you to make a one-sided weld very quickly, very efficiently. The ceramic itself uh, comes in strips like this. Um, it can come in, uh, there's actually radius ceramic that has an elastic band through it and it allows you to curve it along a trail and then you tape it up with strips of tape that aren't previously attached. Um, it comes in, you know, 30, 60, 90 triangle, round, it comes in any shape that you can possibly imagine. What I typically have in, uh, at the school here is just simply what I call flat ceramic. And there's, there's two basic types. Um, this ceramic right here is actually uh, got ridges on it. It's got little ribs, okay? And uh, the back side, of course, is an aluminum tape. The uh, tape itself just has a, a covering on it. You can peel off to go ahead and stick it up. You gotta remember the tape is aluminum, so it'll actually cut you if you're not careful with it. It's like a hellacious paper cut. But essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the ceramic on the back side of the joint, just like we would if it was a backing bar. But then afterwards, it just, it just falls right off. You just take a chip and hammer, the ceramic falls off, the tape peels off, and you have a weld that's been done all from one side. Um, this ceramic, again, as I mentioned, have ribs on it. I, if I peel this off the tape and turn it around, it's flat. But I have some flat ceramic right here. This ceramic is a uh, larger size. It's two inches wide for, you know, huge gaps, I suppose. Um, and it has a line down the middle. It's just a marker line that's been drawn on there from the factory to give you, uh, you know, uh, an idea as to when it's lined up with the joint. You can see it, uh, provided you're not, you know, under it. But essentially, uh, the uh, flat ceramic, the actual flat ceramic without the ribs, is really designed for use with uh, wires that don't have a sliding system. Um, if you're running aluminum, if you're running steel, solid wire, MIG, you know, uh, metal core, uh, stainless steel, copper nickel, anything, um, you would use this ceramic that's flat. Um, that wire will tend to uh, uh, give excess reinforcement on the back side if you use the ceramic with the ribs because the ribs hold the ceramic off the plate just a tiny bit but you need that for the systems that have slag for the processes that have slag you need that um, the slag gets forced out of the puddle it's less dense it doesn't know whether it goes up or down some will go inside the joint if it's a vertical some will go to the back some will come to the front um, it goes wherever it has an opportunity to go, and if you have the flat ceramic right tight against the plate, you may find that on the back side of your joint you have uh, minimal or even under reinforcement. So th that's what that's for. Now for the, the samples I'm going to do today for this video, I'm, I'm just running flux core. I've got an old Millermatic 252, we're going to run 045 wire because that's what's on it. Um, but 045, 052, 1 16th, it doesn't make any difference. The process is the same. Um, pulse arc, copper nickel, you know, steel, stainless steel, doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, the real trick to welding on ceramic is to weld on the ceramic. Um, you, you, you will strike the arc uh, either in the bevel or if you have a starting tab or something on a test assembly, um, you know, you, you, you start off to the side. And then immediately you're gonna drop the wire right down in so that you're, you really have the wire almost hitting the ceramic. Um, in the case of like a vertical down, pulse arc butt, square butt with a, you know, with a root opening about a quarter inch wide, you are, are physically feeling the wire bump the ceramic all the way down the plate, um, you know, barely. You don't want it to get so far ahead of the puddle that you push the ceramic off the back side because as the plate gets hot this tape will lose some of its grip so if you really hit the hit the ceramic hard it will knock it off which you know obviously isn't the game but when you're welding with a process like flux core for example and uh, you ride up on top of the liquid you, you're really just hoping that you are 
letting the weld, which is solidifying, right? The second it gets past the arc, it is cooling, it is solidifying. There is a stage where that wire is like slush. So anyone that lives in a northern state, um, you know that what slush is, right? It's that, that half frozen snow ice mixture. It's soft steel, okay? And it will still flow under pressure um, like a, a forge, you know, blacksmith would move it, but again, much hotter so it flows easier. You can actually get that steel in a soft state to ooze through the joint and spill it onto the ceramic, but not fully melt and consume and bond the, the, the bevel on the back side. And in that case, you, you have what looks like a bead, but you don't really have fusion. So again, you wanna get ahead of the puddle and stay there. And we'll look at that in the weld footage. In terms of what's it supposed to look like, well, gravity's still on. I've got a few examples here. Now, this is what I start my students on. This is two quarter inch practice plates. Um, practice plates, that didn't even sound right. Um, I have what's what I call a runoff tab on the end. It's just a, it's a quarter by inch and a half tab. Uh, so this is all stuff I shipyard terminology, um, but runoff tab on the end. And essentially that tab is fit flush with the back of the plate. So if it's a test assembly in the school, you're generally gonna you know, have a coupon of some sort that's gonna be tested or thrown out for practice. If it's something real uh, that you're welding, you may still put a tab, a starting tab on. Um, or you may not have the ability to do that, depends on how the part's configured. But ultimately, you, know, you, you really want the backside to be nice and flat, fair. The weld on the front, hasn't even had the slide chipped off yet. And you can see that this was a narrow gap. This was done in the flat position, 1G. And I, we never even chipped the slide off because it wasn't really the purpose of this lesson. The purpose was to teach the students how to stay ahead of the puddle. Um, everyone wants to ride up on top of the liquid and, and, and just, again, hope it oozes through. If I did that with a groove this narrow, we would have completely consumed that edge. And again, this was welded by a student that's just learning. So you can see that that edge is still there, okay? Uh, I can see the original factory straight edge. The, 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 the weld has not, you know, uh, consumed that. So they did stay down inside. And this is what you get on the back, okay? I always tell the students, go for the gold, okay, with ceramic. When the travel speed is just right, when the machine settings are just right, you'll get beautiful blues, golds, colors on the back side of the ceramic as it, as it cools off. Um, that weld is just gorgeous on the back side, okay? Um, it is uh, fully formed and it is nice and solid. Um, if you put another pass on, this has had a, a fill pass added to the front side, okay? Another sample. Uh, that coloring, of course, will go away. Now, this particular plate, was welded in the vertical position. Uh, and again, this is the back side. This is the ceramic side of the plate. Um, this plate originally at the bottom, they, they weaved a little bit to catch both sides of the bevel. Um, this has a 30 degree uh, bevel, 60 degree included angle with a root face or a land that's about 332nd of an inch, a 16th to an eighth, somewhere in that range, but probably 332nd on this particular plate. And as they welded up to the top and that weld shrunk and, and, and actually closed this in spite of the tab being welded on, the groove got narrower. You can see that the bead got narrower, but it still flowed through. And it's really important to note that that weld flows through beautifully. It blends in very, very nicely, okay? That's what the backside's supposed to look like. You're not supposed to see the, 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 the little ribs in between where the ceramic joints were. So this plate, as a sample, this was done in the downhand position. And you can see at the very beginning, okay, let, me, let me stand this up here. This was welded flat, but you can see at the very beginning in this area right here how the weld is deep in the root. That's because the welder was staying ahead of the puddle. Okay, they were right down in with the wire almost hitting the ceramic. Then I told them to just back up and ride on top of the liquid. And that's why the rest of this is filled more, okay? So when I flip it over, this is what I've got. 
on the back side at the beginning where they stayed ahead of the puddle, we've got a nice bead that really fills out, okay? Really does a great job. The rest of it, the weld came through, but you can see how small it is, right? You can see like these little like lines through it. And, and those lines are the ridges between the ceramic squares, okay? Um, there's a possibility, and I've had this happen in the school uh, a few times. At the shipyard, I've seen butts fail, you know, I mean, uh, 40, 50 feet long seams uh, fail uh, UT. Um, but in the school, doing guided bend tests, I've seen students take these plates and bend them, and, and where that bead is narrow on the back side, where they didn't have the arc down in on the ceramic, just melting that bottom of that groove away, um, and they just hope that the weld oozed through like it did here. I've seen those guided bend tests just fail catastrophically on both sides because it wasn't even fused. The weld just kind of squished through in a soft state, but wasn't hot enough to, to fully melt that. So that's what we want to avoid. And so when I say we're welding on ceramic, I mean we're welding on the ceramic, right? So let's take a look at some uh, weld footage. Let's show you how we set these things up and let's see if we can't get you guys welded on ceramic. So I've got two plates ready to tack up. Um, these two plates have a, uh, a small land um, or a root face, if you will. It's about uh, 332nd of an inch uh, flat. Uh, we have a 60 degree included angle on, in this particular case. And um, this would be kind of a standard uh, assembly to make it easy to learn on. But again, you can fill huge gaps with ceramic. That's why they make huge ceramics. So don't get too hung up on the details. The trick really is to be able to tune the machine in so that you can stay ahead of the puddle and, and not get the puddle so hot that it falls out of place. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack. So all I'm gonna do is simply lay the ceramic on the plate uh, estimate where the end is and then just basically tear it off, okay? So I'll get uh, three lengths of ceramic, the same, all the same length plate. Just tear it off. That one's a little extra. We'll use it. I'm not going to save the last inch. When I apply the ceramic tape, it's really important to make sure that you don't cut yourself, first of all. And gloves, you know, you might think they'd be handy, but it's hard to get the tape off with gloves on. So what I will do is after I peel the ceramic off, I will fold the tape back up along the edges, and then I will fold the tape out sideways. That way the tape is all the way to the edge of the ceramic. I don't have a gap where I bridged it, you know? Um, and that gives me the maximum amount of tape to adhere to the back of the plate. I'm simply going to set the ceramic tape on the back side, lined up with the joint, and then I'm going to press it down, and then I will take my gloves. And, and a handle of a wire brush works really well for this too, but I want to make sure that when I press this on, I've got gloves on. Uh, I, I, I've never been cut by it myself, but I've seen someone get cut right through their side of their gloves and, and, and cut their finger. Although, argue, admittedly, I only ever saw that happen once, and I, and I wel welded for uh, 12 years out in production at BIW. All right, for this first sample, what I've got is uh, I've got the machine set at uh, 22 volts. I'm running about 250 inches a minute of 045 wire. And I'm going to weld down through the length of this if I can, even if it's not correctly set up. Just to kind of show really the arc shot of being ahead of the puddle. That's really the goal here is to just show how I'm on the leading edge of that puddle. And this puddle is going to be enormous because the gap is huge. Um, but again, we're just going to try to demo that. Now I've got a slight drag angle. 
because I, I want to stay on the front edge and uh, I don't want to you know overheat the puddle but again I have to get a position where uh, as I'm welding the camera can see uh, what the heck is going on and, and I think I'm going to really need to have that drag angle in order for the camera to see this because it's coming down from above okay so let's see if we can't uh, make this happen so I'm going to start on the runoff tab and I'm going to jump right down in okay so the drag angle isn't only there to uh, make sure I can see what I'm doing with the camera it's to make sure that the puddle which is going to get quite large is going to be covered with gas so if you look at the pictures here in the animation, you can see the nozzle, the wire arc, and the hot puddle, and then the lighter area that's intended to show the gas flow. You want to kind of try to imagine that gas flowing out like water and visualize in your head what it would cover to make sure you don't get pinholes of porosity. You also want to make sure that the angle isn't so steep and the... Uh, gas flow rate so high that it siphons in air from underneath the nozzle which will cause porosity additionally if you have a large puddle that you're filling and you have the option to have a post flow on your mig gun you definitely want to run a post flow uh, because that puddle will stay orange and hot for a long time particularly with uh, mig solid wire or metal core where you don't have that slag layer protecting the puddle, you can get Swiss cheese inside your weld in a hurry. And then, now I'm going to stay on the leading edge of that puddle. All right, I don't know if you could actually hear that, but I'm trying to talk under my welding hood, and the camera's not doing... Uh, it's just not picking it up. I don't know what to say. So, this is looking straight down on top of the, uh, the weld. I am dragging this backwards as I showed you a minute ago. I'm weaving to the left and to the right to make sure that the puddle stays up because the groove is very wide. And uh, basically, I'm, I'm riding on the face of that weld. I am not up on the top of that liquid. I'm trying to stay right down on the face. And, and honestly, right now, if I got a little bit further ahead, the wire would hit the ceramic. And that's quite frankly what I want. I want to be right on the leading edge of that puddle. As I'm traveling. Now, when you have a huge gap, you don't have to have a lot of voltage. Um, the puddle will get big on its own. And as I mentioned uh, a minute ago, You've got to be really careful about the puddle getting excessively large and uh, not having gas coverage. Uh, what will happen is you will put the next pass on top of it, and, and particularly with MIG, okay, not so much with flux core. And uh, as you're welding, you'll actually see the arc dig into what looks just like Swiss cheese on the inside of the weld. You won't see it on the surface of the weld at all. It'll all be contained uh, inside the bead, inner bead porosity, and uh, it's pretty ugly. So, now as I get near the end of the plate here, I'm going to stand the gun up vertical to try to bridge to the runoff tab, and then I'm going to continue welding until I come off the tab to give some liquid for that to fill back. Yeehaw. We'll let that thing cool down, and we'll go ahead and chip the uh, ceramic off the back side, chip the slag out of the front side. So, I'll do that in reverse order since it's not very stable on those two blocks. So that is what the ceramic side is supposed to look like right there. 
nice blues, golds, nice pretty colors, okay? Again, that was a really wide root opening. And uh, we've got a really, really pretty looking weld right there. But that's what the ceramic side should look like. Now again, that was a unnecessarily wide root opening, but just to kind of demonstrate the advantage of ceramic. We have a one-sided weld, we could grind that flush, no massive back and bar to remove. Um, pretty, pretty time consuming uh, process if you got to grind a back and bar off. And of course, even if you don't have to remove it, this is a much lighter product than it would be if in fact you had the back and bar in place. And there's the front side and the back. Okay. So having welded probably literally miles of this stuff when I was at BIW, I can tell you that this is the only way to go, folks. All right, we'll try a plate in the vertical position. I'm running 24 volts, 315 inches per minute, again 045 wire. Uh, the root opening is uh, pretty narrow and it's going to be tight going up. I'll probably have to weave a little bit. On this particular plate, I did not leave a uh, land, uh, but we're just going to run it. Again, the purpose of these is really to demonstrate staying on top of the puddle, and that's the trick to welding on ceramic. I can tell right off that's not enough wire speed, so I just dropped the voltage down to half a volt. Same thing. All right, so one of the problems with filming this by yourself and not having a cameraman is uh, I've got to have the camera in manual focus. And with this steep angle that I'm actually looking down on, it's only going to be in focus at one spot, which isn't now. But as we get closer to the top, you'll see that I am on top of the puddle. You can see the uh, edge of the bevel starting to keyhole away, burn back. And I'm actually coming up underneath the camera. So the camera is uh, positioned so that I'm looking under it and my hands are going up above my eye line. So it's hard to see where I'm going. <clears throat> so I'm hitting the ceramic in a couple of places. So this is like the third time I've filmed this over the past few days. The camera's never been in the right position, and this time I said, you know what, I'm just going to get the camera right in the way, and it was in the way, so hopefully uh, I got the shot that I wanted, uh, because I definitely couldn't see where the heck I was going very well. So I'm going to snap this off, we'll take a peek, again the first side, without the slag chipped off, okay, let's look at the ceramic, that's the key here. Again, that is the finished weld on that vertical right there, okay? That's the finished weld. Nice and gold color all the way down through. Just a perfect, a perfect bead. I mean, it, 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 it might get better than that, but I can't say it's going to get much better than that, folks. That is just about as good as it gets, okay? Well, I can honestly say I've never run ceramic overhead with flux core, but I've done it with pulse arc a million times, so uh, we're going to go for it.
So again here we're facing the same problem. Uh, it's difficult to get the camera to focus over that length. Working by myself, I can't move it. And uh, again, the camera is looking up at the weld, and I'm looking just over the top of the camera. So I don't have the view that we have here. I'm looking almost straight down the length of the plate with no real sense of depth perception. And uh, it's not good. So I'm hitting the ceramic like in a couple of I the places. camera is right in the way. I just can't tell if I'm ahead of the puddle or it's catching up. But again, this will work in the overhead position. Before I even chip the slag off, I'm going to make the disclaimer that I could not see where the heck I was going. Uh, the camera is at a good angle. I'm looking over the top of it, straight down the length of this with like no depth perception. And I definitely had trouble staying ahead of it. But we're going to pop this off and we're going to see what it looks like. So let's, uh, let's go for it. We'll, we'll, we'll put this out come hell or high water. We'll, We'll see what the effect is. I'm not going to refilm it because I've been working on this video long enough now that I really don't want to do it again. And as I've said before, I've never done this with flux core. Um, there never were overhead ceramic tests. Actually, when I was at the Iron Works, there weren't any ceramic tests with flux core, um, just pulse art. So let's trip the slide off. And, you know, what do you know? Actually not that bad. Uh, came up pretty good. I got a little spot at the, uh, at the beginning that's a little below flush, but you know if I had to go back and put a score to weld on that, uh, that wouldn't be the end of the world. And I'm sure if I get my machine tuned in, instead of just guessing, uh, it would come out better. But the weld is basically right at flush, and uh, we've got uh, we've got a decent product here. Okay. All right, let's, uh, let's recap here. Um, I, I always say this <laughs> because I mean it, but I really suck at filming these things. Um, I've really tried on this video, which I've filmed about four times, three or four times over a number of uh, months to try to get the arc shots that I wanted. I, I hope they're here. If you're watching this, then they're at least as, I, I've given up. I've, I've done what I could, but the welding of the ceramic, again, the trick is just get ahead of the puddle, stay ahead of the puddle. I'm running flux core, but it applies to any process. You don't want to ride on uh, the liquid. Now, the overhead plate, I, this is, you know, Scout's Honor here, okay? I tried that for the very first time in my entire life right here today, right now. I guessed I'm on 23 volts, 300 inches per minute. I just tuned the machine back because I knew it was too hot after doing the vertical plate. And I just said, you know what, screw it, we're just going to try it, because uh, why not? Um, at the Ironworks, when I worked there, there were no flux core ceramic tests. There is now, there's a flat ceramic test. I don't know of any others, but that could change at any time. But the fact of the matter is, is ceramic can be used in all positions. I didn't do a horizontal butt, but again, trust me guys, it can be used in all positions. Um, the overhead uh, was a standard pulse arc test. 045 wire for aluminum, uh, copper nickel, stainless steel, and obviously steel. So I suspected it would work uh, with spray transfer, you know, or, or flux core, you know, uh, in, in a hot spray mode, and, and it, it did. It came out okay. So let's look back at those plates. Um, they're still warm. So first plate, this is the overhead one. I, again, I, I, I had a hell of a time seeing where I was going, looking over the top of the camera. So I've got a big, you know, kind of mess down in this area where I kept bumping into the ceramic several times. But the back side of that plate really did come out great. I mean, it's a nice looking uh, ceramic job. Now being overhead is minimal reinforcement, um, but you know, there is reinforcement. It's, it's a little less than a 16th, but it's there. Um, I've got a, a couple little spots, again, where I got ahead, I hit the ceramic, I got some spatter, there's a spatter ball kind of stuck on there, you might be able to see that. Um, I could probably knock that off with a chipping hammer, set that thing down. 
This plate right here was the one that was welded in the vertical position. Again, the front side of the plate is right here, okay? Uh, I made no attempts or to, you know, refilm any of this, uh, what you're seeing here. Um, so this is the plate. I, I just set the machine at a, you know, setting that I thought I could run it at, pull the trigger on a piece of scrap to kind of, you know, make sure I was in the ballpark and then I went for it, okay? So again, could the front be tuned in so it's a little bit more perfect? Yeah, of course it could if you want to try it a bunch of times. Um, but is that a perfectly serviceable weld right there that I would not have to grind to put a, a fill pass in? Absolutely, okay, it's good. The back side is extraordinary, if I must say so myself, okay? It came out really, really great. But that's what it's supposed to look like, and if you stay ahead of the puddle, that's what it will look like, right? So that is, again, the ceramic. You do not see any indication in that puddle of where the ridges were, the ribs, the gaps between the, the, the little ceramic uh, squares or anything. Okay, you should melt clean through and get a nice appearance. Set that one down. This was the one I did flat with the massive wide root opening. I dropped down to 22 volts. Again, I mean, that's just gorgeous. You know, the color on that's beautiful. Had I let that cool a little bit longer, you can actually see that line right there, that's where I pulled the tape up and the air hit it uh, a little bit sooner. That's just from cooling. But again, that's a beautiful, beautiful backside weld. And again, that is ceramic welding. That's what you get. The front side is, is nice. You know, it, it's uh, really flat. I was able to stay ahead of the puddle the whole way. And it would take quite a few passes to fill it in. But, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. Okay. Again, recap, we don't want this, okay? We don't want to ride on the puddle and have, I can see every rib, the little ribs on that ceramic tape, okay? I keep looking at the screen, not the camera. Amateur hour here. The little ribs on that ceramic, I can see every damn one of them in here, every last one of them, okay? I don't want to see that. This beginning right here was where I was ahead of the puddle. And again, this wasn't filmed today. This was just a student plate that I pulled out and I had them, you know, like you don't know it, but I'm gonna use your weld, okay? So that's what we're looking at. We want to stay ahead of the puddle and get that puddle to wet out. We don't wanna see where the ribs were. That means that weld went in so cold that it did not do any damage to the face of the ceramic. And, and let's look at that, and this, this is it, we'll end right here, okay? This is the ceramic tape that I chipped off from the big wide one, okay? You can see where that ceramic, which originally had those ridges on it, let me grab this piece. Okay, this is from the overhead. Right, melted in. That's not slag, that's just where the ceramic has been melted into a glass, okay? This piece right here, same thing. This is from the flat, the wide flat butt. That's where that ceramic has been melted into a glass. From the edges, if you can get the, if I can get the camera to focus, the right shot, you can just see on the edges the ribs, the original little grooves, okay? Right there, that's a good shot. So we are melting into the ceramic. When we ride on the puddle, we're not melting into the ceramic. We're just sitting on top of it, okay? If you imagine yourself laying out uh, horizontally across some, some ropes, you know what I mean? It, your, your body fat, in my case, would be sagging down into those ropes. That's what you're getting. And you don't want that with ceramic. So on that note, maybe too much information. We'll end right there. Good luck welding on ceramic.